further ado. And as I always say, let's jump right in to game number one. Best of five, remember. So, first off, we can just get a broad overview from this minimap. We have Memo spawning over here as the yellow Shang pieces. And so yeah, spawning at six. What do we have to work with here? So the gazelle push from Soy is going to be nice and clean, whereas the gazelle push from Memo, equally nice and clean. Now, interesting to note, very close elephant for Memo, and I think his map... Oh, 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 also important to note is that both players have access to one restart if it is before four minute mark. Because this is a best of five, and we want as close to a great match as we can, players have access to a restart, and in... <laughs> Last night's interview with Memo, he did mention far away Woodline would indicate to him that he needed to do a restart. We'll see if he uses it. We'll see if he remembers. I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, well, actually, no. Soy should know. It's in the rule book, but I did not. I did not remind Soy about the restart. So I hope he remembers um, that that is an option. But if Memo restarts here, then he will then know that he has access to one. Uh, he doesn't need to do it for this map, so hopefully that is not affecting the tournament's style. Anyway, the gazelle push for Memo coming in already. He does have access to an elephant and an easy gazelle push, so I'm not so sure that he will use his restart. The restart rule, again, is before four minutes, you call for a restart. You get one for this tournament, for this uh, best of five, for the whole best of five. You use it, it's up, it's gone, you can no longer do it. So this map, I believe, is workable for Memo. We might not see him use it here. The wood line's just over here. It's not too far. And it has two elephants next to it. I think I would use this map personally. But maybe not. It's it's tough. It's tough to say. This isn't the worst generation you can get. But this is a whole lot of nothing in the back here. And it's going to be important to note that Memo has made it across. And I think he has found both crossings at this point. This is a two-crossing map. Just a reminder, we got the one in the middle, and then the one closer to Memo's side of the base. Uh, one closer to Memo's base. Memo's gazelle push coming in here is a little bit later than Soy's. Soy's map looking pretty good. Check out the timeline real quick. 13 to 12. Slight advantage for Soy, but that looks like it's just oscillating. It's probably just a few seconds of advantage now the elephant lure always an option for memo he will have access to more food at the start of this game this artifact from memo right here is dangerously close to soy's base oh man and the pit coming down from memo with one shorefish for sure Using these could be a bit of a stretch, and probably by the time he is able to do that, there'll be some scout ships on the sea. And yes, we have hit 4 minutes and 30 seconds. There is no restart coming out from Memo. Probably the right call, as he has access to this elephant. He's got enough food. He's probably close to clicking up, and actually 15 villagers. Ooh, maybe Memo. Falling a little behind on the wood count here. Ooh, ooh two villager deficit. Two villager deficit. Oh yeah, four shorefish here. It's four. He's getting the alley lure though. Now Soit finds this crossing. Memo's artifact is still intact over here. A lot of crocs, a lot of crocs guarding this part of the map, but Soy's moving forward with one vill. We've seen this before. In the game, in the first game he took off of Iron Steel, it was with one forward villager building a house and then a stable. Could we be seeing defensive barracks for slingers and forward stables for... So I... Oh, and he's going to walk right into the wood line. Did both players see this? And Memo, sharp as ever, immediately notices and he is in hot pursuit. Is he too far behind, however? He sees the croc. The croc changes on him. Oh, and that's going to be absolutely brutal. The crocodile changing aggro. So, Soy's moving deep into the territory of Memo, and that's going to be a real threat for him, especially knowing that Soy is favoring these forward stables. Every map that he's placed the forward stable on, he's won, right? I think that's true. He's done it three times in this tournament, these forward stables. And if he drops this, it could be brutal for Memo. But Memo, having access to watching these games... 
He's seen these games. He knows what could be happening. He sees the threat. He's dropping a defensive barracks. Now, he doesn't have anything to wall with. But he does have these two elephants. What are we going to see here? A lot of villagers moving forward here. Is that a stone miner? Some stone being mined. So, is he going to go slingers? Whoa! A migration coming from soy. I don't know what I'm seeing right now. So these this granary is going to be really exposed, but Memo might not expect that. Two villagers on stone, typical for a slinger push. But he has nowhere to make safe. His slingers are always... So slingers that are spawning out of these barracks are always going to be exposed, right? They're always going to be just out in the open because there's no wood line to hide with. There's no... I mean, I guess he might be able to cram them into like the stone mine spot for safety but oh man tool time's coming out nearly identical soy two villager advantage though and here's the first stable coming out aggressive on memo land and that is going to be absolutely ridiculous oh my gosh does memo have the wall off in time he's going for it but with just two villagers this might be too slow the scouts come out in just about 35 seconds i believe or is it 40 i forget exact number another stable oh man memo really needs to focus on this walls this first scout is out and he knows exactly where this wood line is he oh and memo's aware memo memo senses the timing force builds each wall tile and he's going to get a full wall off inside this land. So what he needs to do now for him to stay defensive here is to build a dock. He needs to not... Oh, that's I thought that was a tree for a second. He needs to build a dock and build the scout ships as defense. And so he's immediately going for a dock. If he gets a scout ship... No, he's not going to get a scout ship. He's going to build a transport. We know this style. We know this style from Soy. I'm predicting a scout ship first. Memo's got his dock almost up. But is it going to be in time? I think this transport is just going to be absolutely brutal if it's a transport. It might be a scout ship because the scout ship is a lot more reliable in terms of getting damage onto these villagers. And moving a whole host of villagers forward, trying to really get this food income for the scouts. The full upgrades on the scouts as Soy is running around the base. Now the slingers are slowly building up, but as we've seen before, without the two armor, these slingers are going to get absolutely shredded by scouts with five damage. Now, the dock is up for Memo. Does he recognize the threat? The scout ship is out. And it is going to start hurting these villagers. Neither of the shorefish, neither of these fishermen are damaged, so he will be okay at the start of this. Another dock for Soy, fully investing into this scout aggression and this is five scouts oh my gosh this is a lot of scouts and memo slingers are a little spread out this could be an issue for him the scout ship is out for memo memo dancing with the villagers not losing a single one yet five scouts moving out in a double scout ship here so two boats memo getting the repair off got a couple damage off oh and the scouts are, oh the scouts are gonna catch out some slingers but memo quick on the ball so there's a bit of a maze here for the scouts to work with but oh and so he's going to retreat from that with the damage upgrade. Memo may have secured himself enough slingers. Ooh, but maybe two villagers. Two villagers go down. So Memo has an option here, and that's to move his, scout, his slingers to the sea. The slingers will provide a lot of offshore support for his ships and help him recoup some of these losses on the sea. Hmm. He needs to, get, he needs to repair this boat. So you can have it in time with the slingers moving out. These villagers are all super exposed and the scouts are coming around the top of the map. Oh no, Memo. But Memo knows. Is he going to build a storage pit here? No, he needs to run. He saw the scouts. He knows he has to run. He should have seen that on his mini-map. Memo pays attention to that kind of thing. And he's going to be a full exodus from his previous base as the scouts are just going to be too much. A couple slingers could be here. And he's going to get a nice repair in. A full repair will come in from these villagers. Will they get the wall tile? And he gets the wall off. So the scouts are now stuck on the other side of the map. They're going to have to go all the way around if they want to be impactful. And... Oh, Memo's moving forward with a whole host of slingers. And he's going to get in on the woodline of Soy. Did Memo just outplay the crap out of Soy here? Soy's scouts are rendered completely useless by this wall off here. What an incredible play from Memo. So the scouts with their speed, will be able to walk all the way around. But look at the woodline for Soy. Soy hasn't moved him. Soy's just now reacting to the woodline aggression. Look at this mini-map, guys. Look at how crazy and messy this is. But as I said in the previous match, 
memo thrives in messes like this. The scouts coming all the way around the map to kill the repairman on this boat and also getting a few hits in on the ship will mean that Memo is going to be on the back foot here. Maybe needing to get the second dock up to maintain production because Soy does have two scout ships, but without access to wood for the time being, Soy is going to have trouble keeping up with the sea control. Oh my gosh, so Memo bringing your fill forward to get the repairs will now have the sea advantage and he kills one of Soy's fishing boats. The Slinger is still coming out, but these ones over here are going to be super exposed and will lose this man fight. Wait, oh he won! Right, they do three damage. They do three damage per hit, so we had just enough. That last Slinger Stone being lethal here. And Soy in shambles. Shang is in shambles, my guys. This is incredibly close. So he does have a lot of his economy stuck over here with his scouts on the safer side of the map for him right now, as the players have essentially switched, swapped bases. But the villagers from Memo on this side of the map are under duress as the Slingers will be pushed back. He will try to take the hill, though, and try to get up in this wall, but there's not enough numbers here. These scouts are just going to be absolutely brutal. But in the meantime, the ships from Memo. Absolutely devastating for Soy. His... His five fishing boats could be threatened. Memo opting for the damage on the dock. Might be the right call. These villagers are in a really awkward spot. He needs to repair this house if he wants to keep that villager alive, but it might just be too little too late. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that wall off. Trying to chop his way to safety. The fourth boat coming out for him, and these scouts are going to keep culling the masses. Keeping the slinger count low is how Soy will stay in this game. But for Memo. Oh man. These scouts are going to be brutal. There's a lot going on here. These scouts are what Soy needs to win here. He's got this beautiful wood line over here. He needs to repit this for efficiency. But he might not have the wood to invest in this just yet. As his first wood line was previously scattered, he is rebuilding, but opting not to wall this off now this is a very dangerous number of scouts and memo is running out of wood here if we're being honest he's in danger of chopping through he's gonna have to be super careful as to not chop through the scouts bouncing around oh no he somehow he broke this for some reason and the scouts will come across and find the slingers he will get us around and these slingers are going to be mincemeat for these scouts a quick wall coming in once again oh boy this game is close this the vilhai for soy but Soy has lost so much now i'm gonna say this game's pretty even memo just coming in time huge naval advantage with the river and here now memo has to be extremely careful about this as we said before and these villagers these two villagers are they can't they can't out repair so he's going to have to do quick wall once again. <laughs> oh, this is this is tough for both players, I think. Soy with an advantage in score, but remember, I don't... I think most of that is going to come from most explored, because his scouts have explored a lot of stuff, and his kill-loss advantage. I, I don't know. I don't know how to call this. This is tough, guys. Soy has a lot of villagers still alive. But the sea is going. Huh. So coming across for the repairs. This will be very strong. These these scouts are absolutely brutal. And he's open, but he gets the wall. He's going for some bowmen inside the wall. Maybe the right call. Could be too late though. This scout number is just deadly high. I don't see what Memo can do at this point to win the game. I think he's basically stuck in his little walled area, right? Like, what what can he do? He's trapped on all sides by scouts. He's going to have to do something crazy. He has no option for food. He's going for Bowman. His only food is this, but I don't know, guys. So like his scout count is extremely scout count is extremely high in the two docks on the left side of the map. Wow, Soy playing extremely well here. After that, and after that initial setback, 
Now going for the market, could we be seeing a tech switch into slingers for him to knock down these walls? And also, if he saw their archery range, counter the counter the bowmen that are going to come out. Now the ships from Memo coming across. He has a couple that are damaged, so he could, with this repairman, have enough here. But Memo, might going back in with the range upgrade, should have the advantage here. Storage pit. These two villagers doing what they can, but I believe that they will eventually go down to these scouts. Soy rampaging the land of Memo, while Memo has absolutely no army to speak of, and he, he's, he's really running out of wood here. He needs to win the sea fast if he wants to survive this game. I believe Soy has the positional advantage in the in the in the advantage of units, but with time, I believe Memo's position will grow to be more profitable, I think. So the bowmen are coming out. Four bowmen, not enough to beat this head on. However, it appears that Soki has a right click down to the barracks, and Memo's gonna get a lot of free hits here. It's a mer a trade boat for Memo. He immediately deletes it, hoping that we didn't see it. But we did. We saw that. I'm gonna get a replay of that, just so we all know we saw it. There was a trade boat in the river. Deleted immediately. Now, the sea has been pushed again by Memo. And we see him deleting it right there. We all saw that, guys. That was a blunder. That's a lot of wood, and he cannot afford that in this situation. Now, with the recent switch into Bowman, for the time being, the pressure from Soy isn't going to be deadly yet. It looked as if it was going to be, but it seems like these villagers have died. Oh, man. The barracks here and the barracks here and the market here indicate a tech switch from Soy into Slingers, which is a great move. Slingers and Scouts, I think, is a deadly combo. And I don't know if Bowmen are ever going to be enough to cover the deficit here. No upgrade yet from Soy. Once again, not going for that Slinger upgrade. This is maybe the fourth game he's played with this similar style of going Scouts into Slingers. And the fourth game in a row where he will not go for that Slinger upgrade. I'm gonna check the timeline real quick, and it's back in favor of Memo. So the timeline getting a little bit of a swing here. It looked like for seconds so I had Memo covered. Looked like he had his number. But now Memo with firm control of the seat will have the food income to work with. And the barracks from Memo, I wonder what we're gonna see from there. Axeman? Axeman perchance to counter the slingers. Or maybe slingers of his own. Micro coming out as the ranged units will do battle in the middle of the field. We see some slingers from Memo here, but slingers were already on the menu for Memo. As he had slingers earlier, so he will not need to be worrying about getting that upgrade. So as Soy switches out of the scouts, I think he ran out of food here. Yeah, it looks like Soy ran out of food. Ran out of steam on this push. Wow, guys, check a look at this minimap. So, Soy is building farms back at his base down here. He's building farms over here. His wood line is thriving now with nearly half a dozen vills here. This wood line is still thriving. Memo with no pressure on Soy for the time being other than on the river. And somehow Soy has crawled back into the river again. Memo being negligent with his sea control, allowing these two docks to get built. Or if these are the same docks, allowing them to produce another four ships, this is going to cost both players a lot of wood, and it's really going to slow down the fight on the land. The repit coming in for Soy, with the opportunity to get a better wall-off situation for him, making these villagers safe his top priority in this instance, as it is roughly half of his economy. His land is, his whole economy is completely split here. And he needs to be absurdly careful not to lose it all. And it is currently under duress as these Bowmen and Slingers... Actually, I don't think Memo knows about this. So Soy will be safe for the time being. Now, the micro from both players on the river... Looks like Soy might get a bit of an advantage here. Although the range and the repairs coming in, the defensiveness... Playing defensive on the river tends to be an advantage as you have access to... 
reinforcements, Memo walling off a new section of the map for his wood line, as he has abandoned this one. Oh, when he saw the villager and he's chasing it into this wood line. Once again, Memo gets in on the wood line for Absoy. We saw it here before and we'll see it here again. Memo forced into, well, no, sorry, Memo forcing Soige into another exodus. Both players very tenuous with their economies. Neither player is comfortable. Neither player is, you know, really rolling in the resources. But for the time being, Soy on the back foot. With no new units. Oh, and Memo. This is bold. This is dangerous. This is really dangerous. This one scout. He's coming back around. He's looping through. He's going to look for farms. He's going to look for units, and he's immediately going to find all of these extremely exposed villagers. This... oof. If Memo had an advantage, this is it being... dispelled. The scout ship's coming across. Eh, uh, maybe. With the help of the bowmen and the, and the scout ships, these scouts can be repelled. But losing access to this food, that's 120 wood. And with the sea battle still continuing, two villagers going on a little march. One might fall to the stray arrow. No. Wow. Memo. Repelling soy from his side of the map. But his wood line, which he has previously opened and abandoned, will have some scouts. And Memo is hit bronze. With all the food, income, and the lack of army, so far, the Bronze Age comes out. The game's slowing down a bit here. Now, Soy has a lot of resources storing up. He hasn't really been making too many new scouts. These are still like this. I think he's still working with a similar army. Now, Memo's going to be waiting for his War Galley tech first. War Galley, though, that's the age 2 unit. But the Galley. The tech should be coming in quite soon for Memo as he was doing a timing attack with this tech upgrade. Is Soy going to call it after seeing this Bronze Age and the techs come through, or does he have a plan up his sleeve? He might have the resources to Bronze at this point. He's had these farms going for quite a while without making any units. And here we see the War Galley coming out. Will this be enough to win the scene out? So... Previously, we've been seeing Memo's pushed into this area a few times, but unsuccessfully. He hasn't been able to clear out the sea here, but if Soy is not able to hit Bronze, he's now going to lose the sea for sure, as the War Galley just so far superior to that uh, scout ship unit. And we see a stable for Memo, walling in his villager as I think he's a little scared of these scouts so we're seeing chariot archers so the wheel upgrade is done for memo and probably chariots as well I don't think we've seen any gold mining yet finally a game that gets to bronze but let's take a look at this timer guys it is 34 minutes into this game and a player is just at bronze and no player has won this is an extremely close match extremely close but I think memo has an advantage now Strong enough for victory. Wow. This is a lot of scouts. So it, it appears that Soy is all inning on the scouts. He used all of his food. He knows he needs to win now before these Bronze Age units get too strong. And if, if, if Memo is able to clear these scouts, I expect we'll see a GG. If the scouts are able to get a lot of damage in... We might see a continuation of this game, but this is a last-ditch attempt. Most of these scouts are damaged in here. Two more scouts coming out, so there's absolutely no way that... Unless Soy's already clicked, there's no way he's going to be going bronze anytime soon. So it's a bronze versus tool fight, and it doesn't take long for any player to realize that that is a bad fight to take. <laughs> Scout getting body blocked in. <laughs> the villagers doing a little dance around the wall. Wow. 
Now, soy with a big enough economy at home takes a takes an advantage in pop for a short period of time. But what can we see here from him at this point? If this wood line is open, he could get a lot of damage in. But with the wheel upgrade, scouts scouts can still chase down bills. Scouts are still faster. As you can see, villagers still die to these scouts. Memo, I think, going to evacuate this. That was open. He chopped through. This is actually pretty brutal for Memo. This could be the advantage that Soy needs to not lose. As I said before, he's fully investing in these scouts, but the war galleys on the shore will just slowly clean up the scouts. So if he doesn't get critical amounts of damage in, these scouts are not going to be enough to crawl his way back in. Is he still producing scouts? It's a new scout, I believe. The villagers from Memo on the run. This is a lot of damage. This is a lot of damage. On to Memo. From these scouts. Memo with very few villagers finally working his way back to the shorefish. But the economy from Soy is so far untouched, I think. Well, Memo has a tech advantage. Soy's economy is much stronger at this stage of the game. Although without wheel, it's a little more inefficient, but he just has way more villagers. I mean, you can't produce units without vills. In desperation, he's going to be chopping some wood, but the scouts are coming across to deny this wood as well. Memo on the run again with basically his whole villager economy. He's got, okay, he's got a few over here, but the scouts are in hot pursuit. The scouts see him. Does he know that the scouts see him? He notices, and he's following... Okay, he's going to try to deceive them. He cannot let the scouts find this wood line. As it is currently one of his only sources of wood. He really doesn't have a lot to work with. So, the real question. As the game reaches a little bit of a lull, the players are going to be microing these fast units back and forth. Memo still without enough food to really do anything. He still can't afford the... The cavalry armor upgrade. He doesn't have the plus two range and chopping upgrade. Investing in the fishing ship and war galley has given him some breathing room on the sea. But these scouts are still just absolutely... They're just denying so much space. Every time Memo makes a new villager and rallies it somewhere, it's just going to die. Okay, so with a fourth chariot archer... <laughs> And two more scouts from Soy. Soy is sticking to his guns here. He's going to be sticking with the scouts, I believe, until he really can get the numbers off. Oh no, the scouts just spotted this wood line. The numbers here for Soy, but the chariot archers are a much more effective unit. And here we go, the counterattack from Memo. Realizing he has enough units to deal with the scouts for now. Ooh, looping back around under the wood line. This could be devastating for Memo. Getting some information here. He's going to see all these farms. And we could be seeing a Bronze Age from, from Soy soon. This has been a lot of farms. And he's had a lot of time with them. And Memo just hasn't had farms. Memo's been working purely with this fishing ship. These scouts buying so much time for Soy for his economy, but the counterattack was the scout has been out for Memo, and he's moving some chariot archers across. Now, chariot archers are going to be a pain. Uh, without the wheel, Soy's villagers are going to be extremely exposed, but he has so many of them. He has, he has a much larger economy at this stage, but the tech advantage could be in favor. As Memo builds up this chariot archer count, the question is, can Soy keep outproducing him? And not microing him and just dancing. He's wasting so much time from this army. And Memo, once again, forced off a wood line, pushed across the river again. Oh, but this is bad for Soy. Soy can just can't outrun a Chariot Archer. Chariot Archer gets so many free hits on villagers. Memo, seeing the weakness, is sending a bunch of... Oh, he just scouted out all these farms too. Focusing on the wood line for now. But Slinger's a great counter to Chariot Archer's. Oh, 
Alright, I believe Memo's starting to get critical numbers of chariot archers now. After what seemed like forever. I think his food income is really inefficient as he's working with essentially just seven fishing boats. But with sea support and the wall as defense and a government center, bold move may be looking to start booming up here after seeing what Soy's economy is looking like. Now both of Memo's attacking scout ships will go down and he's going for a wall off with the boat. So that is walled. He's trying to make safe here. I feel like he might be giving a lot of respect to his opponent's base. When it really doesn't have anything. Soy playing magnificently. Memo's getting really distracted by these scouts. And meanwhile, Soy's economy has just been absolutely booming. Take a look at the timeline real quick. About even, even with the tech advantage, but the score lead heavily in favor of Memo. Do we see any upgrades? No. Still no new upgrades. And still no gold collected. These scouts, a huge threat to Memo's economy, so he is really trying to shut down. Oh, see, here come the scouts once again. Dealing decent damage. He's going to catch two out, and with the Slinger backup, Slinger's a very hard counter to Chariot Archers. Maybe, maybe Soigia's found the right unit comp to deal with this. Soy is somehow com comfortable. This is incredible. I don't know how Soy is still in this game, but Memo finally getting his fill count up to 34. But look at these scouts! Look how many there are! This is devastating. Memo just does not have an army to deal with this. He keeps getting chase. He keeps chasing scouts around the map. Soy is really out. Outplaying Memo in terms of micro. Although I think the decision to win the sea... I mean, it costs Memo in that, look at his army size right now, but he has security and some of his food income. That's just so many scouts. So, with this much scout production, I don't think we're going to be seeing bronze just yet, but who knows, it could come in pretty soon. Another, a forward town center here, and I think if Soy commits to this fight, he's going to lose the game. He needs to keep doing what he's been doing, which is running around, so maybe, just maybe, Soy has just clicked bronze. And he's comfortable with this. But after losing all of his army, all of that food. This is a very long first game here. Wow. So we'll be seeing an attack onto Red's base. So Red going for slingers now. Like I said before, a very strong counter. But Memo is now booming. He knows he can outboom his opponent. His opponent has very few offensive options with all those scouts dying and still making scouts, so I guess we're not going to be seeing a bronze just yet. Slinger's moving in, but Memo's starting to get to that critical mass. And with and with the plus two range, Slingers are going to have trouble unless he can really get a mass going, and he just doesn't have the numbers to deal with this many chariot archers. Once again, in this first game in a best of five, if games keep going on this long, we're looking at quite the series here. But with Memo's army finally moving out across the map, Memo, when he hits Bronze Age as a player, typically plays a little bit safer, so I think that's why, how we can explain him not attacking this extremely exposed economy with absolutely no walls, just exposed farmers. Memo building up, staying safe at home, clearing out the scouts, and now moving across the map. 50 minutes. He's pressuring the economy. <laughs> and Soy hits bronze! Oh man, Memo has maybe... Maybe one minute of time to do lethal damage here. But Soy, recognizing the threat, will... Will call GG on game number one, and that was... Wow.